The last and most advanced body animation shot I'm going to show you here is one where we have a moving camera, but the camera isn't moving just with a backplate. The camera is actually moving with Ted, around Ted. Sometimes we can move the camera around Ted when we don't need to have him moving. But in some of the shots where we do have him moving, we need to remove stuff in a shot that's moving. So let's go ahead and get right into it here. We need to remove Zach's arm from this shot because it's obviously there and we needed his arm there, not just to hold Ted up, but to move his head up for this shot. The first thing that we're going to do is rotoscope out Ted's head. So in order to do that, I'm just going to double click on this here and draw a nice roto around his head. And then hit play. And this roto goes by very fast. It's nice and easy because we have a contrasted background. And then we can see here that it stops because we didn't render past this point. So we need to go back to the last point that we see this shape and then just click in the middle. It's going to extend the rendering to this frame right here. And again, we don't care about this side as much. All we really care about is the area next to the arm. And we're going to do just the first 55 frames for this shot because you'll get the idea after that. The rest of it is just kind of busy work. Now that we've frozen those first frames, we can go back into here, see what we've done. I'm going to go ahead and stop it from moving past this point. And I'm going to definitely smooth this out by adjusting the feathering so it's up to 15. And then reduce chatter. I'm going to try that at 5%. That looks pretty good there. And then now I can actually duplicate this layer and remove the roto brush and then draw a mask around this area. Then I'm going to hit M for mask path and then just animate this from beginning to end. That looks good there. Here we need to move it up a little bit. By the time we get to this frame, it's going to be down here. That looks good. Okay, now what we need to do is duplicate this layer one more time. And we're gonna remove anything from it. And we're gonna go here into animate track in Mocha. Okay, and then here what we're gonna do is track the background plate. We're gonna replace this part of the ground here with a painted mat that we're gonna make later. So, and so what we're gonna do first is draw a a spline around Zach's arm and Ted so that we can use this information to tell Mocha what to exclude from our track because we want to track the background, meaning the ground, so that we can later paint out Zach's arm and then track that painted layer to the original shot. So we have that layer and now I'm going to add an additional layer which is going to be the ground here. There we go. And we want to make sure that this is beneath our first layer. And then I'm going to turn on perspective and shear. If I don't already have this visible, I'm going to go view and layer control and properties. And then I'm going to select this top layer here and hit subtract. So that it's going to subtract it from this bottom layer that we've created beneath it. And now we can track forward and make sure that we have this extended outside a little bit more so that we're not getting anything in the way of our track. It gets a little bit off, so we need to go back and make sure that we're extending that so that it 
doesn't affect our track and then continue it from here. Okay, and now let's click on this bottom layer and make sure that we have a good track. I'm just gonna click on this right here. If we move back. So we have that tracked onto the background there. And I'm going to export this tracking data by going to the last frame here and then clicking on this right here. Noting this is frame, frame 53. Export tracking data, copy to clipboard. Now I come back here into After Effects and I'm going to paint out the last frame. So I go to this plate part right here, which is frame 53, and I'm going to double click and I'm going to select the clone stamp tool and then simply copy parts of this shot here so that it paints out Zach's arm. And I'm hitting the Alt button to select the region that I'm copying. And then I'm just simply dragging over the new area and it's removing Zach's arm from the shot. And I can paint over Ted because I have another layer of him that I'm going to roto over the f top anyways. There we go. So it's not perfect that that'll work for what we have planned for this shot. And now I can go back here. I'm going to select this layer and pre-compose it. And then I'm going to go time freeze frame. So this frame is frozen. If I click on it by itself. We can see that nothing's moving. So I'm going to go to the first frame and hit control V. And now we can see that it's pasted on and it's moving with our original shot and so now if I unsolo it we can see that it's being tracked in the background behind the original shot and we can choose to adjust this mask here and so this top mask here I'm going to feather it so that it blends in with the background better I'm going to bring it up to 25 and then I'm going to extend it shrink it so that it doesn't show Zach's arm. Then I can take this and draw a new mask. There we go. And now we've added in that background and I can select all of this by hitting Command A, Command Shift C, and then Command K to adjust the width of this to a square like we'd see in a vine. And Zach's hand has been removed. There's a little bit going on here on the edges that we can take care of simply by double clicking on this, going into our rotoed layer and shifting the edges. We're just going to shrink this down a little bit. There we go. And now it's been removed and that looks really good.